Hello organic chemistry students. This is recording for chapter 8-3. We're going to be looking at the electrophilic addition once again, but this time of Br2 and of Cl2 to an alkene. And this is actually going to be your last lecture recording for the fall 2015 semester. I hear your disappointment. The electrophilic addition of bromine and chlorine, this is the this is what you did in lab last week. Um, hopefully you, your lab instructor or your recitation instructor gave you a little bit of background on the mechanism and the stereochemistry. A uh, couple important points here before we get started. The mechanism is not a carbocation mechanism as we saw for uh, record in recordings 8-1 uh, and 8-2. We're going to get a unique intermediate called a halonium ion. If it's bromine, it's a bromonium ion. If it's chlorine, it's a chloronium ion. Since there's no carbocation, it means that this is actually a stereospecific reaction and that there are no rearrangements. What we're going to see, however, is that we're going to get anti-addition here of the electrophile and the nucleophile. They are going to add 180 degrees opposite of each other. So there are two parts to the addition of um, Br2 or Cl Cl2 to alkenes. In this first part, we're going to get dihalide products. So the electrophilic reagent, if this were Br2, it would of course be Br, Br, um, there's no uh, nothing else that's going to add as the nucleophile. So one Br atom will add as the electrophile. The other Br atom will add as the nucleophile. So you're going to get Br and Br added to the sp2 carbons of the alkene. So notice the alkene that we have here and that we have the, the carbons labeled, the more substituted carbon, a partial positive charge, the least substituted carbon, a partial negative charge. Now if you're having trouble identifying the partial positive and partial negative charges, look at the number of hydrogens. This sp2 carbon has, has the fewest number of hydrogens attached to it. It actually has zero. That's your partial positive. This carbon has the most hydrogens attached to it. That's your partial negative. As your electrophilic reagent, the Br2 or the Cl2, as it approaches the alkene, you're going to get this momentary dipole where one bromine is going to be more positive, in other words, the electrophile, and the other bromine more negative. It's going to add or act as the nucleophile. And what happens here is that the electrophile and the nucleophile must add by anti-addition. Here is one anti-addition product. Uh, before I go on, just notice how I've drawn the alkene. Here's your carbon-carbon double bond, and the laser pointer is going down the axis of that double bond. But instead of showing the substituent groups being in the plane of the paper, I have the molecule tilted such that these two groups are tilting out of the paper, or out of the screen, coming at you, and these two groups are slanted or tilted back into the screen or going behind your computer screen. This is going to make it much easier to see the anti-addition. So the electrophile has it. Oh, someone's at my door. Hang on just a second. Okay, I am back. Where was I? All right, so notice that the electrophile has added to the proper carbon, the more negative carbon. The nucleophile has added to the more positive carbon. And that they are very clearly in uh, anti-orientation relative to each other. Okay, that is stereospecific. That's why this is a stereospecific reaction. Okay, and here's the other possible product. In this case, they're pointing in the opposite directions from the first product. So in the addition of Br2 or Cl2 to alkenes, it's stereospecific. It's the anti-addition of the electrophile and the nucleophile. And you're going to get a pair of enantiomers. Now, the way this substrate, this alkene substrate is drawn, we are not getting any new chiral centers, but you certainly could, and that's going to be very likely that you are going to see that type of a problem. So when you do generate two new chiral centers, instead of getting four stereoisomers, you're only going to get two, and they will always be a pair of enantiomers. So let's look at the mechanism now for this reaction. 
Okay, so again, let's look at our alkene and let's label the carbons partial negative, partial positive. So the pi electrons of the alkene are going to grab the electrophile. And arbitrarily, you can see that we've labeled one of the bromines with a partial positive charge. Of course, as that happens, the bromine bromine bond is going to break and we're going to form a Br minus and that's going to be a nucleophile for a later step. But here's where something unique happens. This bromine, the electrophile bromine, okay, of course it has three lone electron pairs. Those electron pairs obviously are going to sense the more positive charge on this carbon and they're going to do what lone pair electrons want to do. They want to grab that positive charge. Okay, so once again, this bond is breaking. We're forming a carbon-bromine bond here and a bromine-carbon bond here. What do we get? We get a ring structure. We get a three-membered ring. Okay, this carbon grab the bromine. Lone pairs on this bromine grab this carbon. This intermediate is called a bromonium ion. That's the halonium ion intermediate that's very common to these reactions. Here's the Br minus. That's going to be a nucleophile in the next step. This bromonium ion, I've drawn it as being on the top of what was the alkene. There's a 50-50 chance that it could have also formed on the bottom. Because of this bromonium ion, and since there is no carbocation, there are no rearrangements. Let me emphasize this. When you use Br2 or Cl2, do not draw a carbocation in the mechanism. It's wrong. It does not happen. All right, let's see what happens in step two of this mechanism. So in step two, the nucleophile is going to add. So here's our nucleophile. It senses the partial positive charge on the more substituted carbon and it is, of course, going to grab that carbon. Carbon can't have five bonds. It has to get rid of a bond and it's going to get rid of that one. That bond is going to break. It's going to go towards the more positive bromine. This is essentially an SN2 reaction. The nucleophile is coming in 180 degrees opposite of the bond that's going to be breaking. And this is where the stereospecificity in this reaction comes from. This is anti-addition. It is stereospecific. So, the way I have this intermediate drawn, the, bro the red bromine's on the top, it stays on the top. The bromine nucleophile came in from the bottom. Of course, as I said earlier, there's a 50-50 chance that the electrophile bromine could have been on the bottom, in which case you're going to get the mirror image product hence the stereospecificity of this reaction. All right, let's take a look at part two of, or the second part, or the second possibility of adding Br2 or Cl2 to alkenes. Sorry, I cut off there. So we're adding Br2 or Cl2 to alkenes. And in this part, we're going to have a second nucleophile present. Now, the second nucleophile could be a nucleophile that we add in, such as cyanide, it could be the solvent, such as water, or even an alcohol. It is really very flexible of what this other nucleophile could be. The important point is this other nucleophile takes control. It's going to be in much higher concentration than the nucleophile that comes from the electrophilic reagent. So the this, electro, this nucleophile that I'm circling is essentially unimportant anymore. When you have a second nucleophile, that takes control. This is really neat because you have a huge amount of flexibility now in your products. The electrophile will add to the more negative carbon, and now the second nucleophile will add to the more positive carbon, and again add by anti-addition. So here's one possible product, and the other one will be the mirror image. So as I said, this is this is great if you have to synthesize new compounds. You have a lot of flexibility here. The, it is regio selective because you know exactly where the electrophile goes. You know exactly where the nucleophile will go. 
and it is stereo specific because we always have anti-addition of the electrophile and the nucleophile. That is the end of all recordings for Organic Chemistry 343 Spring 2015. S uh, excuse me, Fall 2015. We'll see you in the spring.